It's only been a month since our previous video about Dutch farming enterprise Franz and Agriculture, but we are already back with more. We want to show you that the winter months can also be a busy time of year on the farm. The workshop is filled with tractors and machinery that need looking after. The harvest of Brussels sprouts is an ongoing process and the field drainage is in need of maintenance. After some real winter weather, early February, ploughing could resume. This provides us with some fantastic footage. As soon as all the crops have harvested, workshop maintenance starts. Frunzen have a workshop that is kitted out to do most repairs and maintenance in-house. When needed, dealerships help. Replacing wearing parts on the Dewolf Quattro potato harvester is a job that employee Wilbert and neighbouring farmer Jorg tackle together. Tractors are also prepared for the coming spring. The farm has two full-time mechanics who carry out a lot of construction jobs and repairs. When the drivers aren't busy, they help in the workshop. With a fleet of 10 tractors, there is always a job on hand. Harvesting the Brussels sprouts starts as early as July and continues until early March. When the crop is frozen, the sprouts cannot be picked, but bad weather doesn't deter the harvesting crew. A 4 row Tomoba self-propelled harvester is used. This uses circular saw blades to cut the stems from the plant. Workers have to push them into the harvesting head by hand. This strips the sprouts from the stem. The leaves and stem are chopped up and blown back onto the ground. Inside, an optic grader removes impurities such as damaged sprouts, residue and other defects. The crop is stored in a bunker and unloaded on the headland. A hook lift trailer brings empty containers and picks up the full ones. These are brought to the processor where the sprouts are washed, graded and packed. In less than 24 hours, this nutritious vegetable can be on your plate. Last winter was very wet and a lot of rain fell. The harvester sits on steel tracks that allow the machine to travel across the field under all conditions. It might appear that the field is compacted, but because of its large footprint, it actually isn't bad. Up to 900 millimetres of rain can fall annually in this part of the Netherlands. This means that all fields are drained to carry excess water away. These plastic pipes need maintenance as they can get blocked up with soil and roots. A new S&S drain jetting machine has been purchased. The farm's John Deere 6105R is on tick over and operator Andre uses a remote control to operate the machine. This means he doesn't have to sit in the cab, but can keep an eye while standing in the ditch. A cone-shaped steel head sits at the end of a plastic flexible pipe. This is pushed through the drain. It removes blockages and, during the return journey, it washes out any debris. Exactly a week later, we return to the farm. Winter has transformed the landscapes and the first snow of the year has fallen. Finding fields of freshly turned over brown soil looks strange in a virgin white environment. There is only a thin layer of snow on this field, which grew onions last year. Despite popular opinions that you shouldn't plough in snow, this gamble is taken. The soil underneath is still warm, which will melt the snow in a matter of days. As frosts have stiffened up the wet clay soil, it means ploughing can be done without compacting the soil. This clay soil needs a bit of weathering, and ploughing in spring would be too late. What is your view on ploughing in the snow? Please leave a reply in the comments section below. You might remember that ploughing was carried out using a trailed eight-furrow lemkin behind the fent crawler. This could not be used in furrow, which is necessary when it is slippery on top as it is now. The plough has been swapped over for two new Lemkin fully mounted ploughs, a 7 furrow Dual 10 and 6 furrow Dual 8 to increase capacity. The Fent 942 and 724 are used. For our cameras, they drive together in the same field. This isn't very practical as it involves a lot of waiting on the headland. That is why the 724 is ploughing the neighbouring field. RTK GPS steers the plough, which means that the furrow is always straight.
Instead of ploughing, the headlands are turned over using a Gromegna crankshift spader behind the fen crawler. This machine is new, together with the sulky front tank. With this setup, wheat can be drilled in a single pass when conditions don't allow for the conventional drill to be used. It also does a good job on the headland, and, by the amount of snow left on top, you can see it doesn't bury residue as much as a plough does. We have come to the end of our first video for 2021. Please join us next time when we'll visit the farm during springtime. We will introduce you to new crops grown on the farm and show you more interesting pieces of equipment. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching. Goodbye.